example, let's get into the definite integral. All right, so if f is defined on that closed interval in the limit of the Riemann sums over partition delta, then the limit of the norm as it approaches zero. So if we take that largest rectangle, if we take, if we make sure that its width is approaching zero uh, of the sum that represents the sum of all those rectangles, well, then this limit exists, then f is, is said to be integrable on that same interval, and then the limit is denoted by, so they're gonna take this big old limit, which is uh, kind of a pain to keep writing, so they said, hey, let's get a different notation for this. So they went with this, they went with a definite integral notation. So they took the integral symbol and then they put these numbers uh, down below and up top. So it's the integral from a to b of your function times dx. So it's still kind of got a height and it's still got that, that width to it. So the limit, it's called that definite integral of f from a to b. So this number a, that's your lower limit of integration and then the B is the upper upper limit. So this is a lot easier to keep writing instead of having to write that stupid thing over and over and over. I mean, it looks really cool. I mean, if you really wanna impress somebody with your math knowledge, drop that down and they're gonna be like, whoa, this person's pretty smart. Um, so I mean, it's, it is kind of cool to look at, uh, but this is more user friendly. <clears throat> okay, so I'll let you guys kind of read this. Uh, the thing about being able to get a definite integral, um, you know, there's conditions that you have to meet. Uh, and so one of them is just, it's got to be continuous. Uh, so if it's continuous, then you can integrate it over uh, A to B. That's pretty much all that this says. Okay. So example two, find the definite integral using, uh, in this case, we're going to use the graph of the function. So we're integrating uh, from zero to three of two x. So this right here, remember it's that limit stuff. So this is really wanting the area under the curve from zero to three. And the reason why it said to use a graph is because it's going to make a nice geometric shape for us. So the graph of 2x, that's just a line. But we only want it from 0 to 3. So from here, and we'll say to there. So we got the area of a triangle. So 1 half base, which in our case is 3. It's from 0 to 3. And then the height, well, hmm, how am I gonna get the height of that? Well, same way as I did it before. I gotta take this x value, this three, stick it into my function, and that'll generate the height or the y value that goes with it. So the height is six, which makes my area nine. Okay, part B, same thing, let's go ahead and draw it. So the absolute value of x, that's that v. Uh, but again, I only want it from zero to three. So I don't have to do this left side, it's just from zero to three. So this triangle right here. So one half times the base, so from zero to three, that's three. The height, well, if x is three, absolute value of three is still three. So there's my height. And so that area is nine over two. So if you can draw the curve, and then if it makes a geometric shape, then I'll just use the geometry, uh, or the geometric formula for that shape. So triangles, rectangles, squares, circles, uh, okay, so let's do, we can do both, we've got the time. So the graph of five, 
That's just a horizontal line. And we're going to stop it at 3. So base times height, this is so not to scale. But you know what, that's okay. I set my own scale. All right, D, ooh, the graph of nine minus, or root nine minus x squared. So this is one that you just got to know. And remember, um, because you're gonna see it uh, in this class, but you're gonna see it quite a bit in calculus two. So this graph, the square root of nine minus x squared is gonna be a semicircle. So if it's a number minus an x squared inside of a square root, that's always a semicircle. And then to get the radius, just square root whatever number this is. So square root of nine is three. So from the center, you're going out a distance of three. To the left, to the top, and to the right. So the area, um, we only want it from zero to three. So that's a quarter of a circle. So pi r squared, but it's only a fourth, so just divided by four. So nine pi over four. Ta-da! So there you go. So according to our definition, the definite integral represents a Riemann sum, which finds the area under a curve. So is it possible for a definite integral to come out as negative? And the answer is yes, because if the area uh, is under the x-axis, the definite integral is negative. So if this graph would have been flipped upside down, if it would have been, you know, this quarter circle down here, then that definite integral would come out as, an, as a negative. So it gets a little tricky because the area does not always correlate to the value of the definite integral. However, to find the area, we can do it manually by breaking up the definite integral into smaller pieces and ignoring the negative sign since geometrically it is simply telling us it is below the x-axis. So use the graph to find the definite inter integral and the area of the shaded region. So we, we're gonna do two things. We're gonna have two answers for this, one for the definite integral and its value, and then the second one for the area of the shaded region. So just keep in mind, they sometimes they're the same like in these two examples, but sometimes they can be different as we're gonna see in this. So if we did the definite integral, this area that's above compared to this area that's below, what do you notice about them? Well, they're equal. Well, this area is above the x-axis and this area is below. So anything that's below is going to have a negative value for the definite integral. So I've got a positive value and it's negative equivalent. So if I actually combine those together, it's going to equal zero. They cancel each other out. So that would be the value of the definite integral. The area though, area is always positive. So area, they're not gonna cancel out if they want the area. You just have to find the area of each one and then add them together. Well, they're the exact same shape. So just find the area of one and double it. So two times a half times the base times the height. So the total area would be 25 over two. All right, I'm gonna stop it here. 
And the next one, we'll look at uh, properties of the definite integrals and what you can do with them.